Welcome to Module 5 of the Air Potato Patrol Training. In this module, we are going to cover some of the different control options that have been used to combat air potato vines, how effective these options are, and some of their shortcomings. We will discuss physical methods of control, such as cutting the vines or pulling them up, chemical control with herbicides, and newer forms of biological control with beneficial insects. Physical removal, or just pulling up the vines, can be effective on a small scale. But remember that these vines grow from underground tubers, so just breaking off the vines at ground level won't work for long. The plants will sprout again from the tubers and can grow back very quickly. But if you're dealing with just a few plants in your yard, physically digging them up and removing the entire plant will work just fine. You can also make use of mechanical control or just basically cutting and mowing the vines. The best time of year to do this is early spring. Some of the advantages are this slows this season's growth. Cutting at the ground level kills the vines that are out of reach. Very inexpensive, but some of the drawbacks are if you're not careful, you may accidentally spread some of the bulbils. And this gives little long-term control unless you do it diligently for multiple years. In the past, air potato roundups were very common and popular. This is where you get volunteers to go through an area infested with air potato, usually during the fall or winter months, to gather up all the bowl bills to prevent them from falling to the ground and sprouting. This type of program can help slow the spread of air potato vines because the bowl bills are the main means of dispersal for the plants, but it does little to control the existing plants. The tubers left behind will regrow the following summer and the cycle continues. Air potato roundups have become less common now that the air potato beetle has been released in much of Florida. Another form of mechanical control is digging up and removing the tubers. This is very effective, but it's also very difficult because it's extremely labor intensive. Sprouting is variable, which means that you might have to make multiple visits. And generally, the entire tuber has to be dug up. If any of it breaks off and remains underground in the soil, the plant can grow back. This doesn't mean that nothing has been done to control the spread of air potato. Herbicides, such as glyphosate and triclopyr, are commonly used to kill the plants. They are fairly effective and may work well in an urban setting or on a small scale, but controlling the vines in forested areas and wetlands is difficult. The vines require multiple springs to totally kill the plant, and follow-up is required. Because this plant grows from underground tubers, the treatments must be applied at the proper time of year. The best time of year to apply these herbicides is in the fall, when the chemical will be effectively translocated to the tuber for better control. The problem with these herbicides is that they will damage or kill any desirable plant material that comes in contact with the chemicals which makes using them on vines that are tangled among other plants very difficult. Remember that with any herbicide, the label is the law, so carefully read the entire label so that you will understand all the safety considerations and restrictions for using it safely and effectively. For biological control, we now have Liliocerus chini, or the air potato beetle. We learned all about this introduced insect in Module 3 of the training. Some of the positive points of the air potato beetle, very inexpensive, very low cost, very simple to use, but some of the drawbacks are the beetles will only control the plants, they will not eradicate them, and we have seasonal fluctuations where sometimes you have larger numbers of beetles and other times smaller numbers of beetles, and therefore lower control. For successful long-term control of any pest, the best approach is adopting an integrated pest management mindset. Integrated pest management, or IPM, involves the use of multiple research-based control strategies to reduce the pest, which in this case is the air potato vine, down to a tolerable level. The survey data you are collecting from your location is being used to better understand the vine, the beetle, and how new control strategies can be developed. So at this point, the best course of action for controlling the vine is by using the multiple strategies we have covered here, all depending on your own site-specific situation. We'd like to thank the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services 
and the United States Department of Agriculture for funding the air potato beetle rearing project and distribution.